it is now time for some Python on hardware news. This is my favorite time of the week. All right, so. Um, v is for victory. Yeah, well, that's what the code was sort of too for tonight, which was. So five Python alpha. 5, yes, we five have alpha. an alpha out for CircuitPython 5.0.0. You probably remember CircuitPython 4. I remember so Python long 1, yeah. Yeah, well, now we're up to 5. And 5 has started to add a bunch of stuff. We've got uh, some Bluetooth updates. We've got e-ink displays natively supported. We've got some um, OLED support as well. Yep. PWM audio, which is great for uh, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So um, lots more cool stuff. And some audio stuff is making its way in. We're making some audio improvements like audio mixer. So um, good stuff is coming into 5.0. So uh, you know, 4 is definitely stable now. People are loving it. It's faster. Uh, uses less memory, 5 will be even better. Try it out on your device, circuitpython.org slash downloads. Has your Next, UF2s. Uh, device Simulator Express, a Microsoft Garage project. We mentioned this last week, but I got even more information in the newsletter this week. This is if you want to use VS Code and you want to use Circuit Playground Express, Circuit Python, and maybe you don't even have a device, so now yeah, there's a device if, simulator. If you love the device simulator from MakeCode, and who doesn't? I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment that the make code team added and as you move up you know you maybe want to use it with vs code as well in circuit python well they've added uh, a similar type of um, simulator so you can uh, blink leds and detect temperature and light um, all from within vs code so it's a plugin that you can install so it works with any vs code install and it's ready to go for circuit python circuit right. here's just some of the interns not all over picture congratulations summer interns at microsoft they shipped Garage. the product yay next up we have some updates on circuitpython.org especially if you go to circuitpython.org downloads you will be yeah. able to see different boards some of them aren't even released we decided you know what to heck with it. If there's an unreleased board, it's just going to show up in the list. You're going to see it. It's okay. We're an open source company. No secrets here. We're okay. So we have 74 boards all together, but you can see some of the upcoming products and more. Next up. Looking um, great. I've been chatting with the team, and I'm like, hey, we're doing so much stuff. Maybe I can get like two sentences from, from our um, team that works with Circuit Python and some of the things that go into it. So uh, this is from Brian. Brian finished up Katni's TLV. 49 3D breakout and wrote a circuit Python driver. And this is the Bitsy Wing, which actually went in the store today. Yeah, so this is an interesting one because there is no addressable registers like most I squared C sensors. So instead, you have to read bytes from the sensor until you get the information you need and on the same rights. Next up, I squared uh, C is amazing because it's always the same and it's always different. Dan's working on a lot of Bluetooth stuff. Uh, this week, working on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and Chromebooks. It does not yet work on iOS, but I believe there's a new update. No, you he did. He did that. get it working. Amazing. You'll see that next week. Um, Friday, you got it going. Yeah, descriptors are added to their parent objects. They're created, and last up, Dan, is adding compilation options to CircuitPython so a custom build can uh, enable and disable individual USB and USB HID devices. This takes a step towards user-defined HID devices. And Alyssa uh, was on the show and tell, and also released a guide, had some status updates on the TensorFlow light for Raspberry Pi, and showing some really cool vision recognition projects. We'll show that off shortly. Next up, we had some neat guides. Uh, this one in particular I really like because it had uh, one of the best tutorials, if not the only tutorial I've seen, that had to optimize your graphics for e-ink displays for one color, two color, and also yeah, if you, want, if you want your graphics to look great on e-ink displays, get that old school dither style going. We show you how to do it in Photoshop and Image Magic because every project eventually involves Image Magic. That is correct. Okay, also there is some more information about this cool book. Uh, this will be coming out. It's from Japan and it is Circuit Playground Express, Circuit Python, and Moo all in one book. And not only is the cover amazing, but check out some of the posts that we've done about this and some of the thoughts and care that's gone into this from the author and the artist who are working on it. CircuitPython snakes its way to Gamebuino. Gamebuino has a version of CircuitPython that they're... The CircuitPython compatible. CircuitPython that's compatible that's on their game playing device, so we posted that up and more. Um, we're hoping that they put in some pull requests so other people can get these features that they were working on. That is our request. We'll see if they do it. Next up, we've talked about this before. This is the CircuitPython powered 
hub. This is now in production. Yay. Congratulations, Capable Robotics. Yay, they're capable. I backed one of these, so I can't wait to receive mine, and it runs CircuitPython. It's pretty cool. Uh, the folks who are working on the RoboHat, Robotic Masters, are a close release, they're right? about to ship this, and this is a CircuitPython running hat. Feather takes flight on the Kia Feather. This is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth Feather. It's based on the Feather format because they wanted the most compatibility and the most wings and accessories out there. It uses an STM32 F111 and uh, you can program it with .NET Framework. Yes, it supports MicroPython. Yep, and more. And then this, um, this person was on our show and tell, but I also really like this. This is a cool project. Um, it's a 3D printed case that is also a uh, simple LoRa remote control. Yeah. So um, you can read more about it. Um, all the Tinkercad stuff is up. All the GitHub stuff is up. All the CircuitPython stuff is up. So you can even remake one of your own. OK. Um, each week, we try to spotlight folks that are in the news or um, have a cool interview. So this is kind of neat because this is a twofer. Um, there's a Python community interview with Marlene. And Marlene was also the person who got one of the Pi badges who immediately made um, Marlene's name on Marlene's name badge. So uh, read that And she's interview. wearing purple, which is cracked. Yeah, so you can <laughs> read this interview over at Real Python, and she's also the chair of the very first PyCon Africa. Cool. Check it out. Next up, uh, the ESP32 S2 is coming out soon. It's slowly so making its way. Everyone's freaking out, and they're like, I want to see this thing, I want to see this thing. So John Lee posted up a photo of this. They also in their monthly newsletter, I had the data sheet. Yes. So we posted that up. And we're, we're, as soon as they have the USB core working, we're totally going to use this chip. I think we'll, we'll make Feather with it. We'll do some good stuff. We're just waiting for them to do a silicon revision and get the USB um, full speed core working because that will be that's exactly what we need for us to get CircuitPython working, to get TDUSB working. OK, the next issue of Micromag is available for download, and, and it's all about oh, Micropython. Oh, Micropython, Micropython, so Micropython, Micropython. you can download it for free. And also, if you want to subscribe, you can support them. It's a community-made and supported magazine. OK, PyCon UK is coming up next week, 13th to 17th. And there is a call for bring out your hardware. So if you're going to the event, you can bring your hardware. I have links to the event. It's in the UK, of course, but if you want more information, you're in the UK and you want to bring your own hardware, uh, check out uh, the PyCon link in the newsletter. It is a uh, call for this open session. So they did one in a previous event and Carlos sent this to us. So you can bring any of your Python running hardware. And that is it for the Python on hardware news this week. Jam-packed. So yeah. much stuff is happening every week. Okay.